Hello, my name is Clark McAllister, president of ADASA. With smartphones and ADASA technology, EPC radio frequency identification will become counterfeiters' greatest enemy. Falsification, duplication, and counterfeiting of documents and goods is an $800 billion problem with broad economic, social, safety, and health implications. The International Chamber of Commerce, known as the ICC, predicts that it will double in only four years. The magnitude of various non-authentic documents is very difficult to quantify, detect, and control. They occur in financial, tax, and regulatory situations in all parts of the world. The question is, what do you think it is worth to detect fraudulent documents? This is one traditional authentication process. It is very slow and uses subjectivity and judgment. Traditional visual inspection uses technologies such as holography, microtagants, and stenography. ADASA uses these technologies as a secondary layer of security. When used as part of ADASA's comprehensive security system, these technologies become even more valuable. The data carriers differ in their efficiencies, range and speed are key factors. Range speaks to how many tags can be read from a single read point. Speed determines how fast data carriers can be recognized and interpreted. RFID has clear advantages in both categories. Real-time connections are rarely available. Internet connections are non-deterministic. Response times from remote servers cannot be guaranteed. Network traffic and database loads are highly variable. Authentication should be as fast as the RFID tag read rate. Track and trace authentication serving over a network is just too slow for the real-time RFID read speeds. Anti-spam solutions, like Norton, inspired the ADASA anti-counterfeiting solution. Like Norton, we also use a broad array of actors who participate in collection of field reports. Like Norton, field reports are collected by a central server and heuristics engine. This then becomes a powerful solution when hundreds of millions of people are scanning goods and documents. Now NFC readers, soon UHF readers. The time is quickly approaching when consumers will have the ability to use very real authentication with their smartphones. Suspect goods are reported to authorities complete with location data. The consumer facing app will be customer loyalty apps like this one. The off button triggers the very real RFID authentication and reporting process. Heuristics can greatly enhance security. Past history of security problems are a key predictor of future problems. The ADASA counterfeit control code, called the CCC, is used for profiling of goods and documents based on past history. The system incorporates millions of mobile phones that read RFID tags, verifying their authenticity. Suspicious results are reported to a heuristic server. The server sends encrypted counterfeit control codes to the sites all over the world where RFID tags are being encoded. Counterfeit control codes are used by authorities to focus certain enforcement resources on problems with historical precedent. The Apple App Store and its broad reach is used to sell our security services. 
The system benefits are easy deployment, impossible to duplicate tags, very fast authentication, heuristics which constantly improve over time, and app store in-app purchases. Before we go into the implementation details, let's evaluate the system. We have product, price, place, and promotion. It's perfect. So let's take a closer look. These are the world's first and perhaps only self-contained secure RFID encoders. These encoders are designed for FIPS 140-2 security, which, as I will explain, is essential to the prevention of counterfeit RFID tags. ADASA authentication and transponder copy protection can use a variety of cryptographic solutions that are being developed by standards groups. Or, if you don't want to wait, ADASA has a solution that can be used today with certain EPC Gen 2 chips and transponders. Security systems that are compliant with the FIPS 140-2 standard are deemed to be safe from cyber attacks. This is critical for each part of the system that handles encryption and decryption. Each authentication protocol, whether it be proprietary, EPC, or ISO, must have FIPS 140-2 compliant cryptographic modules. Brute force attacks are used to guess passwords. It should take an average of 2 to the 31st power tries to guess a 32-bit password. This is 2 billion wrong guesses. At the maximum data rate, a well-designed transponder with a password throttle can take up to a year to crack. RFID chips that are resistant to DPA, which is differential power analysis, will not reveal the tag's password. Password throttling imposes a speed penalty for wrong guesses. We also make each password different, so an attacker must attack each password individually. Now that's a lot of work. We also use long cryptographic keys that are secured in encoders and readers by FIPS 140-2. These keys are used to produce pseudo-unique passwords for each item or document. I recommend an encrypted air interface when authenticating large populations of tags at great distances using high power readers. But if you want to authenticate just one tag at a time, then you can inject or jam a signal that is effectively noise into a near field coupler to prevent eavesdropping of the tag's random cover codes. This is how a consumer uses a smartphone to authenticate a document or an item. Looking more closely now, smartphones will be widely used as RFID authenticators. Start by reading the EPC identifier, which is public. This is input into an AES-128 cipher. A key number points into a key table. Here, key number 2 is used by the cipher to regenerate the tag's original passwords. The access password is used to unlock the tag to prove its authenticity. An optional second step uses the kill password for even higher levels of confidence. An RF jammer prevents interception of the tag's cover codes. All in all, these security operations each require only 150 milliseconds. Any secure system requires that old keys be revoked and new keys be issued according to an established security policy. Perhaps only on a monthly or perhaps a weekly basis, this is done to limit the damage of a cryptographic attack. We will use the Apple Store's internal 
in-app subscription system so that customers can automatically purchase service contract renewals. So then the entire cost of an inlay plus security is less than 10 cents when encoding millions of inlays per year. Now that you are acquainted with our system, let's take a closer look at how you will decrypt the CCC in a transponder to efficiently propagate IP enforcement intelligence through supply chains to checkpoints where this critical information is needed. If you are a brand owner with contract manufacturers that are illegal selling their overrun, then this feature can save you millions of dollars in brand erosion and lost sales. ADASA's multi-layered security solution is guaranteed to deliver uniqueness and authenticity when using ADASA encoders and iPhone readers. Backward and forward compatibility is assured through emerging RFID security protocols which can be supported by ADASA encoders and readers. Now here is the first of two final points that I will explain for you. The entire GS1 EPC numbering system depends upon unique numbers. Each EPC has to be unique. Again, ADASA eliminates the need for real-time global IT systems. We do this using a patented feature for configurable blocks of numbers. Again, using FIPS security, our tag limit counters cannot be hacked. This prevents unique and authentic tags from being applied to contract manufacturers overrun as they are sold into black and gray markets. Our patent portfolio protects core areas of competitive strength that are essential to broad market adoption. Use of today's low-cost inlays, assurance of unique numbers, and heuristics to support the police in doing their jobs. We are forming partnerships. Our technology enables secure, efficient, and scalable RFID solutions. Please contact me to discuss your funded project. Thank you.